Can someone hundreds of miles away connect with your dog emotionally? Today we're talking with Michelle Thomas about what it actually means to be an animal communicator. We also talked about some of the skepticism around the practice, how nutrition applies to the work she does, and we even did a live reading with my dog Jolene to see if we could figure out some of her strange fears and phobias. Did you know that pain and mobility issues are one of the most common reasons that pets get put down? We were absolutely shocked when we found this out because pain and mobility is something that can really be managed with diet and lifestyle. Things like sardines, ginger, and green-lipped mussels all have anti-inflammatory properties which can help actually reduce pain and inflammation. But you know the thing that has worked better than anything else for us? Full-spectrum CBD oil, specifically the one from CBD Dog Health. CBD Dog Health's full-spectrum CBD oil is carefully formulated with all-natural ingredients, essential oils, and full-spectrum cannabinoid blends. These can help dogs struggling with anxiety, pain and inflammation, allergies, and even seizures. All you have to do is take the dropper, administer the oil onto your dog's gums, and you will notice the difference. If you want to try it for your dogs, visit CBDDogHealth.com and use code BK15 for 15% off your first order. You're an animal communicator. What is animal communication? What do you do? When I begin a session, I introduce myself to your animal. I let them know my intention that I am working in partnership um, with their people to have a deeper understanding of them and anything they want to bring forward to help support them um, so that I tell them that can be something physical, it can be something emotional, or it can be something spiritual. And I let them know that they are the guide. Animals really will be the most open when I make sure to show them a lot of respect and let them know that I'm not going to pressure them to do anything. I don't believe in going into, um, my practice is not going into a session and sending them energy. I am open to hear what's coming through them and facilitating shifts. I'm not um, sending them energy. So I let them know that they are driving the session and can bring anything forward that they would like. Sometimes like in your session today, that's first about their people because their people are so important to them and they can be so selfless also they're like okay like we can talk about me after but first I'm really you know worried about my mom can you you know address this first so I really always try to honor where they lead the session and holding space for that um, and it's interesting getting to know different animals personalities um I had a, a session this morning with a lab named Sally, and um, she has many animals. And I've always, whenever we go to work with Sally, Sally will like literally leave the room and like is closed off. So today she's like, I really want to try to connect with Sally. So um, it was a challenge to, I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet Sally really where she's at. So she trusts me and see what she wants to bring forward. So I really am telling her like, oh, Sally, you gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Like <laughs> this, don't worry. This is all I'm, so it's in other sessions, her mom and I would talk a lot about what she was worried about with Sally. And I said, let's not bring up anything before. Sally's going to tell me only what she wants. And so Sally said, I really want you to be here and pet me. Like she was a little confused. It came through of like how, how she was um, receiving messages from me. So I explained to her, like, just like you're connected to your dad when he travels for work and you can send and receive messages to people and animals that are not in your physical realm, this is what I'm doing. Um, and I'm friends with your mom and we really want to, you know, know what you want to bring forward. And then she was very open, but it's a lot about um, really showing like a lot of respect for the animal and what they want to tell me. I love that because my qu next question was going to be, did you ever get an animal who was like, you know, oh my gosh, hi, thank you for finally, <laughs> there's someone here who's listening to me and or the opposite, the animal that was like, yeah, no thanks mm -hmm. lady. Um, we're good. Yeah. I don't know why you're trying to get in my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have, it's interesting, like, particular breeds, like, Sally's a lab, but if there's a really, like, 
stoic, strong breed. You know, I really approach them with like, you know, um, letting them know that, yeah, I'm not going to in any way undermine that um, energy that I'm like really respecting it and going with it. And then they really open up. I had um, one dog who was like a husky mix and she had like uh, other communicators had difficulty um, communicating with him, but I just had to like really let him know how, what a magnificent creature he was and you know, these things. So it's interesting because this even came up in your session today. Animals, I say they have a little bit of ADD, uh, some of them, you know, even, uh, Sally today was like some deep thing about her purpose she brought up and, um, a past life. And it was like, almost, you know, bringing me to tears, like it was so beautiful. And then she's like, oh, I want some soft chicken treats now. And then, you know, in your such day, it's like, let me talk about something really deep. And then like, I really like want to taste some of this ice cream. So it's really like interesting how they can like go sometimes back and forth between things. One thought to another. Which I mean, I guess I do that sometimes. I'm just, you know. Oh, oh. yeah, I do it every yeah minute by minute basis <laughs> i i think honestly sometimes um my brain can be a bit like that and so this is why maybe i think i can follow their thoughts i don't have very um linear thinking like if you look at my notebooks they're like you know like a <laughs> artwork of me i can follow it but i i think i i can be open to just going with where they're taking me and not trying to keep a lot of structure. I'm just like, Oh, okay. We're going to go here now. And then a lot of times are you picking up on the message or feeling and, and you reveal it and the pet parent gets it or understands it. Like something just goes, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I feel like most of my clients are all really open to receiving and yeah I feel like that's why they've scheduled a session that they have to really come forward with like an open heart and mind and as people ask me what do I need to prepare and I'm just like come forward with an open heart and mind and that's really all you need to do why should we be communicating with our animals yeah for me I feel like emotions and energetics are at the core one of the most important things we can do for our health and our animals health. I feel like you can be feeding all the right foods, giving all the beautiful supplements like you make. But if you are missing the underlying emotional and energetic blocks, that sometimes is like the missing link in, uh, both physical manifestations of things and behavioral or emotional things, that there's a lot of deeper undercurrent of energetics and emotions that we shouldn't ignore. I've seen in my own health, I feel like that's really what was the big shift in my life. I went through cancer treatment a few years ago. And while I also did uh, like I had surgery and honestly did chemotherapy but the most important thing to me was reflecting on like what lessons it was teaching me working with energetic guides working with herbs really supporting myself on a spiritual level where I feel like our animals deserve that also one in four dogs is getting cancer and it is it's our environment, our food, but yes, the emotional and mental stress mm -hmm. that we're all going through. And like you mm -hmm. said earlier, where their entire lives, they are, they literally revolve around us. So if we're stressed mm -hmm. or sick mm -hmm. and not feeling right, they're definitely picking up on that. Yeah, absolutely. I will have, you know, animals that are having digestive issues or anxiety and different things. And it's often um, directly related to what their people are going through. So if people are open to reflecting on that and shifting together in partnership with their animals, that's really beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was great because during our session, you brought up um, that I have three horses that are, what, I don't know, did you call them my protectors or whatever? I'm very 
never had a horse. It freaks me out, uh, but man, do I love them and am so connected to them. And it's, I love that you're saying that because it's reminding me of the last horse that I saved. And I literally, I can, a horse can communicate with me and tell me, and the, a first thing that I assume is that something, if something's wrong with a horse, that something emotionally is wrong. Um, I don't know why I don't have that um, immediate instinct with dogs. I just feel like horses mm -hmm. are just so much more in tuned or smarter or yeah, more connected to that. Very sensitive spiritual creatures. Yeah. Yeah. They yell at me and they know that I can help and I feel it and hear it. And my last horse that I just saved, I literally, the first thing I asked was what's wrong? And I asked the owners, I asked the horse and I didn't understand the answer. Like this horse was just devastated. I'm like, you live in paradise. Your mom's a veterinarian, holistic veterinarian. You're so, well, I guess her grandmother is, you're a holistic veterinarian and you're, you're um, devastated. That's the only message that I could figure out. And I could tell in pain and she knew that he was in pain. And so I literally asked him, I go, did something happen? And they're like, yeah, well, three months ago, we lost his best friend. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, guys, that's it. That's what's yeah. going on. You can have yeah, physical manifestations of grief. In their literally, body, yeah. this horse was so depressed and mm -hmm. didn't even have another regular size. It was a Clydesdale, didn't even have another horse his size of donkeys and mm -hmm. miniature horses so upset. Mm -hmm. I was the one that got the message immediately. Just, I knew all of the other physical things that were wrong, but I knew that that's, what's so beautiful about hemp is that it helps. It all helps the emotional, the mental, the physical, the actual physical pain, all of that. But, um, I love it because I'm basically learning from you that I don't know why I have that instinct with horses, but I don't necessarily have it with my dogs yeah that's really beautiful that they're your guides and it came forward yeah that they like led these horses to connect with you because they knew that you could help them yeah it's um it's incredible how did you know you had this gift or do you call it a gift a talent or what it is and then how did you learn to harness it well i think we all have gifts and we all it's just like our five senses I feel like the, it's like opening yourself up beyond what we're just taking in with our five senses and that can look different for each individual how they receive messages I was so interested in holistic nutrition and I was doing a lot of consultations I had uh, my store rolling meadows where I sold a lot of fresh food and supplements and people would come in and ask for guidance. One of my friends had taken her dog to a holistic veterinarian and had applied kinesiology and muscle testing done for protein sensitivities and seeing what was an energetic alignment for her dog. And I call it a ping. I just had a, a ping a download saying order a pendulum and try rather than doing applied kinesiology, muscle testing, why don't you try this with a pendulum? And so I first started with only using energetics for nutrition consultations and seeing what food and supplements were in alignment and the animal's body was energetically asking for. And I saw results with that where skin would clear up, uh, there were dogs who they said like they've never had a solid bowel movement in so long. And just by following what their body was asking for, I had results. And I feel like I had to do that first to lead me into the more emotional, spiritual work because it gave me such a concrete um, trust in myself and in the, the work to really see uh, something uh, results on a physical level. So that as I moved into doing, um, first started with using the emotion code chart and holding space for releasing uh, blocked emotions. And then it just, 
continually evolved from there and I know still continues to evolve, but really starting with nutrition gave me that foundation of seeing concrete results and then having trust to move forward from there. I love it. So it's almost like basically it was proving what you already knew, you know, it was giving you proof of what, like you can't, so if the body is telling you that it needs something, but you don't have that knowledge of what that need is, you don't, you really can't help. So you're basically learning both sides of it. I totally get mm -hmm. that. That makes sense. You mentioned the uh, pendulum. What is the pendulum? And then mm -hmm. what is the um, emotional chart thing that you're, you mentioned? Like, what is mm -hmm. that? So uh, this is my favorite pendulum right now. Sometimes I'll rotate through. Sometimes one feels more in alignment for um, different animals. But I should also start, I'll show you the pendulum, but I want to uh, follow the practice of like when I use the pendulum, what I do. I'm always asking my body to be grounded and held by the earth and asking to connect to the heavens, to my higher self, and also asking for anything that comes through, for anything in the session to be set with the highest intention and only good for myself and also everyone in the session, animals and people included. So I always set um, protections and intention for everything to come through as clearly as possible and also for in the highest good. So um, the pendulum, they show me yes. So a yes for me is clockwise. It's really interesting, my, my pendulum now doesn't fully swing no, it just only swings yes. But when I first started, show me no, it's counterclockwise. And there can be varying degrees of how strong the yes or no is. And it's really about, um, surrendering and being a, a clear channel. Uh, I, I sometimes really enjoy sessions where people don't give a lot of background. I've had a, some clients where they don't want to tell me any information and just really going on a, a clear channel and seeing what comes forward because you really need to put aside. Um, I'm of course drawing um, Guiding from my knowledge, I have a background in working in vet med and work have my bachelor's in veterinary technology and was a licensed vet tech. So I have that knowledge to go on and guide kind of what is coming forward. But I'm also not trying to have a lot of preconceived notions, if that makes sense of um, that balance. Yeah, that's literally what I was trying not to do going in with you mm -hmm. was, you know, go in with any of what I thought was going on or my gut mm -hmm. feelings or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. A, because I wanted to see if your gut feelings matched my gut feelings of what mm -hmm. was going on or what I thought I was picking up um, mm -hmm. from Jolene. But no, I feel like I have been able to communicate with animals my whole life. Um, mm -hmm. I also felt like I also understood children all the time. Like I just, mm -hmm. it just was something that came have a natural. similar openness to them. Yeah. Right. And picking up on who they are, their fears or whatever it is. Um, and only realizing that, that I was doing something a little different because I was, I had a groom shop where I had seven groomers and two bathers and a, mm -hmm. you know, a receptionist and, could tell that none of them had the same type of abilities, mm -hmm. gifts, talents that I did. Um, and I remember they would have so much trouble with certain dogs. And I would mm -hmm. be like, well, you're going in all stressed and filled mm -hmm. with anxiety. They're filled with Maybe stress and fear and that. anxiety. Yeah. Um, that's why you can't get them out of that kennel. But mm -hmm. I can open the door and take them right out. And they would think that I was some doing some sort of voodoo magic and I was like no mm -hmm. no there's something to it I get it I get it so it's yeah. really I I am enjoying talking to someone like this who's practicing it I remember when I first met you in person I was like how do you turn it off if you're able to pick up on this mm -hmm. and energy and them communicating 
um, because I think I asked the first question I was is that I feel like um, those beings that are trying to get a message out when they meet someone like you that they would latch Mm -hmm. on and all go okay she hears us is that Mm -hmm. the type of thing that happens and if it does how do you you know not constantly be hearing everything that's going on around you. I think I have my energetic boundaries up for the most part that I'm not being inundated with that. Really the, I am setting intention, grounding myself, connecting to my higher self and the universe and to your animal and creating clear channels I think that I do set these energetic boundaries because otherwise it would be like overwhelming. Like it would just be too much. Sometimes I find myself in positions of, um, you know, I'm pretty empathic and sensitive. And if there's a lot of grief, you know, I used to do a lot of animal rescue and um, holding space for that can be really overwhelming but it's much different than when I'm setting intention for these messages coming through so setting up boundaries like everything Mm -hmm. else (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah definitely setting boundaries and I think when I was a child I had um, maybe some of these abilities that I don't remember as much I was very in touch with animals this uh, introverted kind of little loner kid who was just hanging out with my dog and horses and cats. And um, I feel like a lot of people who are spiritually uh, in touch with animals are kind of the similar personality of that. So um, I spent most of my time as a child, like quiet time with my animals And then I have um, very distinct memory of I worked in an all cat clinic and I love all animals, but I'm really like connected to cats. And I felt like I was sent to to work there. The, The veterinarian honestly was this like a really aggressive man who had like anger issues. And I just felt like I was there to energetically protect the cats who came through there. And I uh, just could really feel their energetics in my hands and calm them. But I think for quite a while in my life, like I'm 41, I think there was a large chunk of my life where I was not very in touch with that side of myself because just things going on in my life. And I feel like I was at a place now where I can have healthy boundaries that I was ready to open up to it. I think maybe at that time in my life, it wouldn't have, I didn't have the skills of boundaries that it would have been good timing to, to really open up to these gifts. So now that you know that um, you've honed in on this, you know, gift and talent, how in the world do you start making it where you can help other people, animals? Like, is there ever a time where you're not getting anything from somebody or you get an animal who's just bombarding you? Um, like mm-hmm. how, tell me about like, you're like, okay, I'm going to start doing this now on a regular basis. I know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm getting incredible results. The most important thing I can do in my practice is to support myself on an emotional and spiritual and also physical level. So I find it really important to only schedule so many sessions a a day to give myself breaks and um, honestly like reschedule sessions if I feel like I am not in the physical or emotional space. So the most important thing I do in growing my practice and connection is taking care of myself. And that means like I have practitioners who I see to help um, me with energetic work also. And, you know, like I said, first it just started with the nutrition and um, doing a lot with working with people with their diets And then I started with the emotions and I would get feedback of like, wow, my dog like doesn't have anxiety anymore and uh, reactivity going down. So uh, just through getting, you know, feedback, helping to really 
um, build confidence, of course, working with my own animals. I was really proud when we were doing our session. Um, it started thundering and Nellie here used to be so afraid of thunder. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> like, how's this going to go recording while there's thunder? And she just remained calm. So like seeing, just getting feedback, seeing results, um, just has helped me to gain really um, full trust and surrender to the process. A pet parent reaches out to you. What do you find that you're helping them with the most? Because I felt like with me, it was understanding me, understanding what she, what Jolene was thinking about me or the things that I was doing or what she was worried about. So to me, just learning those things about what she was feeling made more, made sense, made her behavior make sense to me type mm -hmm. of thing. So for me, it was a better understanding my dog. Is that what you're finding most people? Yes, I feel like a better understanding of their dog, but sometimes also and almost always of themselves. I feel like... Um, it, my practice first started out with focusing on the animals and it's really beautifully evolved into um, really working with people who want to be on a healing journey with their animals. Our animals serve such an important role in our lives um, as our teachers, sometimes as our healers, and they often come into our life for a reason, are deeply connected to us, um, often bringing forward certain lessons. And so when you come into session, people may not understand, well, I um, have, uh, you know, dogs with separation, anxiety, or sometimes even GI issues, and seeing how that's tied into what's happening for themselves and how they can heal together is really my goal when people are open to that it's really beautiful and i see the most transformation within their animals how do you think it helps a pet parent like one that is maybe not picking up on their pet's energy or they are and they don't even know that that's what they're picking up on mm -hmm. i love how many times i'll get off the stage from a speaking engagement and i'll have you know people come up and talk to me and i constantly they're asking me questions and i always go well what do you think yeah, I mean, I really like helping empower people to trust their instincts on what their animals need. So sometimes, yeah, it can be clarification where, especially when I'm utilizing it, um, you know, around food or different things, you know, people will go, aha, like I just had that sense that they needed that. And I'm like, yes, trust that, you know, I think we're all intuitive beings and you know, connecting to that is, can be really powerful and trust, trusting in yourself. Like you say, that gut instinct, um, like there's really something to that. And I feel like, uh, in general life goes a lot easier if you just try, I mean, you could call it different things, gut instinct, your guides, intuition, you know, whatever you want to call it, really honoring it and, and trusting it. Yeah, I remember doing this. I remember thinking to myself, has my gut ever been wrong about something? Mm -hmm. And it hasn't. Mm -hmm. So why not trust that feeling if it's good or bad and go with it? What do you have to lose by going? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just remember not too long ago walking into a restaurant and just being overwhelmed with get the hell out of here. And yeah, I was with I was it. with like eight other people and I'm like, they're going to think I'm crazy, but sorry. She, lady yeah. sits us down, hands us our menus. She walks away and I looked at everyone and I go, we need to leave. And I just got yeah. up and started walking out and everyone's like, okay. And everyone got up and left with us. Yeah, I think honoring that is important. And, and the animals are walking around with that instinct all the time, right? So mm -hmm. pay attention to what they're thinking and feeling. Yeah. The other day, one of my clients, um, which I, I've had for this dog over, gosh, I don't even know, like 20, 30 sessions. I deeply know this dog and his person and they're on a road trip and she's, 
he just vomited this morning and we're supposed to be leaving to drive home on this road trip and I don't know what to do. He's sick. And when I tap in with him, he was worried that they could have something happen to them, like a car accident or something. Like he, he, he felt something. And so I guess the best way he knew how to alert her is like to vomit, you know? And then he, she trusted him though. She booked an Airbnb for another night and wow. waited to leave a day because she just truly has faith in trusting the universe, trusting her dog. And if that felt like a sign he needed to tell her, you know, she's like, okay, we'll wait. And he was, amazing. he was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. So I know that there's probably like people who are skeptics and Mm -hmm. maybe don't believe it. Is there any evidence? Has this been researched? Um, I know that yeah. it is a, you know, a professional field of practice that you do mm -hmm. for a living. Um, so like, how do people learn it? Is mm -hmm. there proof? Well, I have to say regarding skeptics, I'm okay with that. And part of my processing process in this practice has been coming to terms with and just being like some people will think I'm crazy <laughs> basically some people won't believe this some people I think it just sounds like blah 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 too you know <laughs> so um and being like that's okay like it's not for everyone my my intention is not to be out here convincing people i truly believe that if it resonates with someone um that they then will feel called to meet with me um i can share experiences i always ask permission before sharing what happens in session with animals um, like on social media, but I, I share it. And if it resonates with someone, I feel like they'll feel called um, to have a session, but I'm not out here trying to sell people on what I do. I can just um, give the message and then what they do with that is then up to them. I have to like let go of the, the ego of it, I guess. So there has been a few interesting cases though, where I've had some confirmation of what I'm picking up. I had a session with a dog, Jackie. He was having a lot of anxiety after gallbladder removal surgery. And so she scheduled a session and I helped him to feel safer in his body. But it came forward to support his spleen energetically. Um, it also came forward that th there could be and now I'm never making diagnostics but she said you know I I I think that you should look into this um as there feels a predisposition for cancer in this area so I want you to talk with your vet about this and monitor um so I held space for some energetic support in his spleen and when she went back to her veterinarian she asked them you know like because I asked her during surgery, did they see anything with the spleen? Because he had had his abdomen open. And she said, no, they didn't mention anything. So when she went back to her veterinarian, um, her veterinarian looked through the surgical notes as an emergency vet had done the surgery, not her. And she found within the surgical notes that there was a, a node on the spleen and irregularity in the texture and that it just had not been mentioned to her because... Um, they just were trying to stabilize him after surgery and it kind of got lost in the mix. So, you know, now she's working uh, with a university uh, veterinary hospital and monitoring him and we're continuing doing the energetic work. But that was interesting where, you know, it's not often you get the many animals who have had their uh, abdominal exploration that we can see that. Um, I also had another dog where I picked up... Um, something on his um, adrenal, like a mass. And then when she had ultrasound, it was picked up on ultrasound confirmed. So not here to make diagnostics, but sometimes if I pick something up that's off, it then is confirmed with diagnostics as I recommend following up with your veterinarian for things like that that I pick up on. Wow. How do you learn to become an animal communicator? Is there a school? Like, how do you learn? <laughs> I, I um, have a friend who practices animal communication and I like one-on-one -on -one mentored with her. Honestly, a lot of it has just 
uh, naturally come forward with for me throughout sessions. Uh, I'm curious to know how many sessions I've done, but many hundreds of sessions that the it just keeps strengthening throughout sessions. But there are people who uh, do teach courses. Um, the Pet Talk with Alex, I know she offers courses. Um, I have not taken them with her, but I have a friend who's done her courses. So there are definitely courses out there that I believe that anyone can learn, but it is a practice. Like I'm continually, like I said, supporting myself energetically, emotionally, physically to be as clear of a channel as I can to receive messages. Amazing. I know that communicating with our pets is important. And, you know, what if we do have a dog that is just a nervous or a owner and a dog who is a nervous um, mess? Like, is this something mm -hmm. that the same type of things that we practice for calming and stress release mm -hmm. or a nervous system reset? Is this something that that we can do for ourselves and we do for our dogs? And if we do, what does that look like? Uh, yes, within session, I practice a lot of grounding and in, in nervous system reset practices. If there's an energy or an emotion blocked there before, so say an example, Jolene, your dog, uh, has a, a fear of going down dark hallways, like long, long hallways, and she was in a shelter and had been returned to a shelter and this shelter had long hallways and she brought forward that they they knew a particular hallway sadly the euthanasia room was down a long hallway and they could hear what happened there and she was told to beware of this hallway and so she still has carried forward he said a fear of hallways and so I worked with holding space for this panic that she felt and also came forward some the noises that she would hear. So before I could ground her and do a nervous system reset, really focusing on um, taking that panic and holding space for releasing and transforming that out of her body. And then her body asked for a nervous system reset, which I used hemp for. So that's another thing in session, I will channel different, um, particularly plants. And uh, hemp often comes forward as supporting animals in resetting their nervous system on a spiritual energetic level. So for Jolene, I had the hemp go through her nervous system and it feels like what what I'm feeling in my body it feels like um almost like a computer system where it's going through her nervous system finding areas that feel unsettled smoothing them out but it's like um I'm just holding space for it to go through her nervous system and find areas where it needs to calm and smooth it and reset it so, so it takes several minutes because I'm holding space for it to like fully go through everywhere until it feels smooth. And then what should I be doing in the actual, like the next yeah. time we're in a <laughs> hallway to practice? <laughs> yeah, because it is, it is complete panic. She, and you can tell because she's going into complete panic and she's also on top of that panic because she's not listening to us going, come on, come on. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Come here type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so at that point, what do we do if we now understand that this is where it's coming from? How do we now train her to get past this? Well, I hope that her nervous system will now have less of like a PTSD reaction when she's approaching a hallway. Um, that her nervous system will not um, be reaching that elevated state. But you can support her by just reminding her she's safe, acknowledging what happened, recognizing that that was something that happened to her, validating it, but reminding her that she's safe in her body, you know, can move forward. I truly believe in like really talking to your animals a lot, even verbally and out loud, or if you feel better, just intentionally. But 
I think um, talking to her, reminding her she's safe in her body. Also, you, as hemp came through, keeping up with um, often the plants that come forward to channel, they also can be utilized uh, in like tincture form as well to support them. One of my favorite tools that I use in session, but often it will come forward with flower essences to support your animal after our session. I also want to say, you know, it's, it's, it's like us where having patience in the process that sometimes more than one session, you know, it's like an unlayering and our nervous systems can kind of go back into old patterns and each time you work with it, reduce, like you brought up Nelly about the, the thunder and fireworks, you know, I just see it just keep reducing until it was just thundering and now she's laying on the couch. Yeah, I've noticed that too with giving giving them hemp. Like if they've got mm -hmm. a fear as they get older, that fear is going to go away because you're going to go years and years with thunderstorms where, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I'm not afraid of this anymore. I'm safe. Everything's okay, mm -hmm. I'm safe. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I know so many people could be helped um, by getting a, a communication session with someone like yourself. A, I think the biggest thing it does is that it really, if you are in tune with your pet, it, it makes you go, I knew it. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Like you brought up the shellfish, you know, mm -hmm. allergy, which I had already figured out because every time I gave her green lipped mussels, which I felt like everybody was trying to give her or is included in everything now. And you said mm -hmm. shellfish is in everything. Sure enough, she does have an allergy. So it was mm -hmm. like, it's just a confirmation of kind of stuff that you already know, and then you can learn more about your pet. Mm -hmm. So thank you so yeah. much today for yeah, taking you, so much time with me and Jolene. Um, we mm -hmm. learned a lot, confirmed a lot, and now we can help her even more. So I really appreciate you taking your time. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate your time also. And thank you, Jolene, for allowing me to connect with you. <laughs> She's still back there. She's been <laughs> zonked out doing her, doing her uh, other second best job. Thank you, Michelle. It's important. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. <laughs>